Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to keep working on our horizontal nav menu with drop-down effect. So this is ultimately our objective for this series of videos, and where we left off in the last video was this. Pretty happy with the horizontal menu, but now we want to start working on styling these sub-menus. So let's head over to the uh, HTML. This is what we have. We're working on one submenu first, and then once we get that done, we can simply copy and paste that markup into the other list items. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is, let's see, we've got a section of CSS rules for our main menu styles. Now that we're going to be focusing on the submenu, go ahead and mark those up as well, or comment them out. So let's go ahead and make sure we can visualize things and let's get things moved around. I know that my submenu is going to need to be positioned. So dot submenu is definitely going to need to have position absolute. And so that I can see it temporarily, let's see, my submenu is an unordered list. Let's confirm. Yep, my submenu is on an unordered list, so it's not necessary, but just until we have it memorized, I'm going to go and put a UL in front of the class selector there, so we remember that is for an unordered list. So I'm going to do a position absolute on that. I'm also going to do a background color of yellow-green, so it'll really stand out. Could use a border too, but the background color will serve the purpose. Now when you position something absolutely, it really should be in a positioned container, often relative but sometimes absolute. Now my submenu is a child of a list item. So if I head up to the rule that controls my list items, I can put a position relative on here. So then I can start to position the submenu within that list item. As soon as I start to position something absolutely, I always like to start off with top zero and left zero so that I can see where it occurs. I'm going to save that, head on over to my browser, and refresh. Okay, and so I can see my submenu a little bit more clearly. I also can see that I still have those bullets on there from it being a, an unordered list. Earlier on, I did create list style type none to get rid of the bullets for the unordered list that was in with, within my nav. I could do this in a couple ways. I could take away this child selector so that all descendant unordered lists within my nav don't have any bullets. And that's a pretty good way to go. I can also just do a group selector and put in dot submenu as another element that should not have any bullets. So that alone will get rid of the bullets. Now let me play around with positioning that submenu. So back to the rule for my submenu. It's position absolute. Obviously, zero from the top is a little bit too much. So I'm going to start to knock that down. I'll just go to 50 pixels and check it out. Now I would like this submenu to actually be right there at that line. So I'm just going to use the, the bottom of the header as kind of my visual um, cue. And I'll just keep playing with the numbers here until I get it right about there. Looks like 58 will do the trick. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I can mess around with that later on. Now I want to start to get these list items inside. Actually, it should be positioned a little bit more to the right as well. So I think uh, I'll nudge it from the left. Just about 15 pixels. Let's kind of push it off to the side. All right, pretty happy with that. Notice I'm not worried about the invisibility and then it's showing up on hover. While you're messing around with that submenu, keep it visible so you can see it. All right, now let's work on some of the list items and the anchors inside of there. So within my submenu, I certainly have some uh, list items. And let me go ahead and put an outline on these. Two pixels, solid red. And I also have within my submenu anchors. And I'm going to put an outline on those, two pixels, solid white. So I can start to visualize things a little bit better. Kind of like what I did with the main menu up here, I'm going to use some padding on there to give them some space. So I will head up to my list items, and I'm going to do padding top and bottom of about 10 pixels, 
and then left and right zero pixels. And for my anchors, I'll do padding, top and bottom of 10 pixels, and left and right of 15 pixels. I can't remember what I did for the main anchors. Ah, 10 and 18. And that starts to give them a little bit of a shape. However, we are seeing some weirdness happen here. Now, this is because of a wrapping effect. Um, we have a couple of choices, and we could potentially set the widths of all of our list items to be something more specific, and the same thing for our anchors. But let's try another technique. In the HTML, I think what I'll do is I'll just put in a non-breaking space, ampersand nbsp semicolon, so instead of a regular space, I'll use an HTML entity to do a non-breaking space. So that's a technique that we can use. And now when I refresh this, those items are all together there. I am seeing just a little hint of white on that particular anchor. I'm not sure why that one's a little bit different. I'm kind of curious, but um, everything at a glance here looks pretty good. But we'll see what happens as we start to do a few more things. Now, once you start to feel pretty satisfied with that, there's still another element that I need to apply, and that is, you'll notice when I hover over these, I've got that little green triangle that shows up right there. I need to get that little green triangle into my list items, or into my unordered list for my submenu. So what I'll do is on the HTML side of things, I'm going to put ampersand, and then I think it's going to be diamonds, diam, diams, which is going to give me a little diamond symbol. I'm just going to stick that right in there. However, since I know I'm going to want to move this around, I think I'm going to stick it within a set of span tags. So that's going to go right into my unordered list, not part of my list item or anything like that, but right in there. And that's going to give me something that I can start to manipulate. It's hard to see, it's a little tiny orange one because that's my default font color. But in the next video, I'm gonna start to position this a little bit better and finish up the styling of this submenu.